Hello. This is Dylan's Jam's Redux. Um, so I don't have a show this semester, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I have with me a special guest. Uh, he's my same guest I had last time, uh, Andy Nichols. And we're here to fix a sin that I committed last semester with the fact that, well, I didn't quite play as many Yes songs as I probably should have on my Yes show um, when I did my episode on Yes. So we're here to fix that. Oh, are we um, ever? <laughs> Let me just adjust this here. All right. You don't have a show this semester, but you've I don't. got one. And I got one for now. Um, and this one will be pretty good. This will be a pretty good episode. Um, How many Yes songs did you play on your show? And Not which too many. I think I played like six total. I did play Close to the Edge. I remember I, I just squeezed that one in. <laughs> um, I did go over a little bit on my time slot because I only had a 30-minute time slot. Well, yeah, semester. what are you going to play? I mean, Christ, that could be a, you know, a live version of Ritual is half hour. Yeah, I know. It's like I didn't quite have enough time. But uh, we're here on a Saturday. We are. Um, so we can sort of you can fix some of the issues that I had with last time. Yeah, because, you know, there's, there's no deadlines. No. It, there's nobody yeah. here. It's Ghost Town USA. So we can play. Yeah, we have some time. We can play a couple of Yes tracks. And thanks for having me back on. Of course, it's yeah. It's great to be back down here again at University Heights. Yeah. And this uh, great station. It's a, you know, cold February day. Yep. In the um, midst of some renovations. Yeah. The studio's got a little bit of an overhaul. Yeah. Um, we're getting a window in right behind you in a little bit. Uh, next week they're putting in a window. Oh, they're gonna put in. Yeah, so yeah. we can see through. Um, it'll be cool. Nice. Um, and yeah, we have a, a whole new setup. We got new cameras. Um, as as you saw earlier in the intro, we got a sky cam. Um, and then we got the camera for the guests. And we have some new other equipment in the studio that will probably come. Are in you handy gonna? Today. Are you gonna? Uh, is your goal to have another show again next? You know, maybe next in the fall. Yeah, probably in the fall. Just right now, it's been a bit busy with uh, work and everything. <laughs> I've been all over the place. Yes, you have. Uh, quite been very the busy, busy. Quite the busy person. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm glad we were able to make this work after we've been scheduling this for what three well, tries I think, now. We've I had, think we had a couple. Of, we had a win, we had a uh, scheduling conflicts. We had weather. Yeah, we've had a whole sports. host of issues. Um, you had a, there was a game earlier this morning too. Uh, that you you had we had to shift the time slot today. Yes, well. which I wasn't supposed to work, but they asked me to work it in. So yeah. that's, that's what we do. But I'm yeah, glad make it work. I'm glad we it would, uh, we finally were able to do this. Yeah. And um, it's nice to actually switch back into yes for a little bit because yeah. I, I'm just coming hot off the heels of being at Beetlefest. <laughs> yeah. In New York City last that? weekend. Cra I'm, I'm still recovering from it. <laughs> it was four days. Oh jeez. Thursday to Sunday. Ending Super Bowl Sunday, and I, which yeah. I left for the Super Bowl, and I and I, and I saw you watched was, it. You, was, you, was, you, you saw you enjoyed it and watched yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah. My fr my friends and I were watching it in my dorm. Uh, I know. Quite a game. Uh, <laughs> boring for the first three hours, and then it I, finally got. I thought it was good. The first three hours. It was sucked. defense, kid, and that's what yeah, you need. I know, but like, okay. What do you want? Do you, what do you want? Forty-eight, forty-five oh, all hell the time. No. Okay, come on. The last hour was good. I'll give you that. It was actually tense. I thought the whole game was good because it was just the chat was back and forth. I know for you know this era and generation of yeah, fans, they, it's like a, that's football, baby. Fair enough. That's it. I, I mean, thought a punter was going to get MVP. Okay, it could have. It came close. Remember that um, one tackle, that the one with oh the, the clothesline tackle, that was tough. Yeah. That was that was that I, was a good game. The 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 the, the uh, punt that landed in the the five. Yes, that was phenomenal. Yeah, that was some good work. You know, and Paul was there. So yeah. there's the Beatle connection. He True. was with he was with he was with her highness. <laughs> I think she showed up eight times in the broadcast. I Probably because there was a there was an over under bet on seven and a half. How many times she would show up? Oh, I would have taken that over. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, did you Did you make any money? Did you hit any boxes? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bet this this time around. Come on. I know. Last I year you did. Uh, no, my mom did. I oh, did. Oh, okay. So yeah. one, one of you Franz's. Yeah, did. no, she lost this year uh, in the the pool. Oh. Um, although I think. Uh, did any of our friends win? No, no, I don't think any of our friends won. Um, but <laughs> I don't really I don't really follow it, so I I don't really know how it ended up this year. All I know is she lost in the. Uh, uh, the divisionals. So that's yeah. when she got out of the pool. Anyway, we're not here to talk about sports. We're here to talk we, about yes. We could. We could talk about sports. We could. But, and uh, you know, we have like a you know a little uh, <laughs> kind of memory lane of you and Will calling baseball games last year. Oh my gosh! Year. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, <sighs> missed that. That was that was a good. Those were good times. Those that was because we had we had never done it before. Yeah, call, calling baseball was really fun. Maybe well, maybe you'll come back and do it maybe, again. The guest appearance. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, but the topic of the day. Yes, so I was. I was yeah. You asked me about Beetlefest. Yes, yeah. um, it was great. Uh, I spoke on a bunch of panels, nice, met nice. a lot of people, met some old friends, made some new friends. It was the fiftieth Beetlefest because it started in seventy four. Yeah. So it's kind of tying back into 
well, now I was here last time, but now, as I said before, we went on the air. Now and then, had almost came out. Yes, when it we, was like the week before. Right. So, and then it came out that Friday. And yeah. I, remember, so I remember you were like texting. We were all texting about it. And um, yeah. so this was kind of a, a special fest because it was on the heels of now and then. Yep. It was the 60th arrival of the Beatles landing at Kennedy Airport. Yep. So it was a bigger than usual uh, crowd. It was at a new hotel. It usually cool. is at a Hyatt in Jersey City, which yeah. is not too far. Nope, um, not at all. It was at this new TWA hotel, which is kind of a vintage 60s looking yeah, hotel. Yeah, I, I think I've, I walked past it. It's uh, It was different, but uh, it was fun. Met a lot of um, authors, some people from England who came over uh, that I had met previously and who know my podcast. So it's a nice... It was really nice to, you know, and my partner from uh, Two Legs, he flew over yep. for all four nights, too. So it was great to see him again, and we had a great time. So yeah, that's good. Um, it's <laughs> nice now just to just take a little bit of a break and dive into some, you know, really cool music. I'm actually seeing a Yes Tribute band next Saturday. Oh, nice. A buddy of mine is the drummer in a band called Total Mass Retain. Cool. Yeah, you were telling me about that. They're playing next week, so I'm going to go check them out. Yeah. So it's it's this is a nice segue to get back into, into that yes. into that yes that, that groove, and, right? So and we can do that today. So yeah. I brought a couple of records <laughs> along. I just mean, just a few, just a couple. We'll play a few of them. Yeah. Um, your introduction to yes was when I from a very young age. Um, my dad had played a couple of yes tracks, mostly the '80s stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of which I now know that you don't like as much. Not as much as the uh, the earlier stuff, which right. you introduced me to. Um, oh, you didn't know that before I played it. Not you. really. I didn't really know Close to the Edge until that one day in the auditorium when we were working on the uh, fixing up the speakers and getting them to work in stereo. And you played Close to the Edge in its entirety over them. That was the first <laughs> time I listened to that whole track. And I still remember because I listened to that track like another three or four times that same day uh, in my car on the way home. Like, I listened to it on the way home and listened to it like on my speakers at home. And I listened to it on headphones. Like I got really into you it. You did. I see. I I was playing it, assuming that you had just you had known that track. And I didn't. I mean, you I, may have known I, of it. I knew of it because I knew it was like, oh, it's this twenty minute long track. Right. I was like, oh my god, twenty minutes. That's so long. And now I'm like, that's such a great track. It's probably up in my top ten songs, just because of how good it, how well it works as a piece. We we might have to play it today. We may have to. We um, may have to. Um, I thought you had known it already. Obviously, when you look at up an artist on a Spotify or Apple Music recommended yeah. stuff, Close to the Edge is one you're always going to see. Yeah, it's, it's up there. I mean, in, even in the genre of progressive rock. It's uh, one of the more known tracks. It, it is. You've got uh, the opener, you know, the first album by King Crimson and the Court of the Crimson yep. King. Classic. You see that one with the scary face. You see Close to the Edge. Yep. You know, there's a few that you always see. Yeah, in there, Genesis selling them by the pound. Yep. Also, nineteen seventy three. What a wonderful year for phenomenal year for prog. For, yeah, well, not just music. Yeah, for but but you know especially prog rock. Yeah, um, <laughs> you've got close. Well, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I just I just spoke out of turn. Close to the Edge came out in seventy two. The tour was in seventy three. Got it. Um, but still, it, it, all the same era. I mean, uh, Tales, which is another album yeah. we'll talk about too, that came out in 73. I do recall playing The Revealing Science of God yes. one day when we were working in the auditorium from you start to finish. You did play that. That was another good one. I, I had heard a part of I've heard like the intro to that song before. I never heard the whole thing through. Yeah. All uh, like what, 12 minutes, 13 minutes? The whole song? Yeah, no, I think it's. No, the, the original version is 20 minutes. 20, 30, minutes. 20 Sorry, minutes. Sorry, it's the whole seconds. first side. I always forget if it's like half of Four the side or if it's the full side. Yeah. Yeah. Um,. But yeah, that's another one I had not listened to all the way through until you played it. Um, and I sort of just fell in love with Yes at that point because I was like, this is really interesting music. It's complex. It's very detailed. It's something you can listen to a hundred times and still find new parts of that you, you haven't can. heard. Don't don't try to uh, interpret the lyrics because I yeah, mean, they're, they're, they're wacky. <laughs> they're wacky. I've been listening to this music for 25 years yeah. or more, and I still don't understand a lot of what the lyrics are. Some of them I do. Um with Yes music, I mean, especially the music written by John Anderson in the, in the heyday. Of yeah. course, we know Yes continues now, whatever. <laughs> but in the heyday, their lyrics were um, very spiritual based. Yeah, positivity, light, life. I mean, uh, very somewhat some religious tone overtones yeah. in a lot of those lyrics, especially in the early seventies. Um, a lot of people criticized them for that because they thought they went too far off the deep end. Yeah, you know, and we're going to talk about that like in the first couple of Yes albums and how they've kind of evolved into that and then kind of at the end of the day they're still a rock band but some of their music did border on you know that kind of spirituality yeah and some of those songs are fantastic they are you know close to the edge you know uh, and you and i things like that and you and i still has one of the my favorite guitar parts of any song they're right so uh, they were able to do that i think well 
Some people thought they went a little too overboard. Yeah. Especially with an album like Tales from Topographic Oceans. <laughs> that's such a polarizing album for yeah. most people. People either love it or they hate it. Oh, they, they're like, this is just, how can you do this? And, yeah. and uh, even me as a diehard, at moments on the album, I'm like, damn, this is dragging a little bit. Yeah. Not much. Side three, side three. four. Not four. Okay. That My, or we, we differ on opinion. Uh, well, see, but, side four live is a whole different piece. It's a whole, yes, it's played yes, totally different. Live, it's phenomenal. Right. It's side, a little long. It is. Uh, side three, the ancient, is a little yeah. bit, that gets a little bit draggy. It's got the leaves of green bit at the end, which That's is nice. nice. It's just Steve and John, which they kind of just did an, an acoustic version. Whenever I, I did see them, they would just play that bit of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to, to, to talk about it. I mean, you probably don't even know all the members of the lineups and the history of Yes. Yeah, there's so many lineups with changing members and everything. I mean, I know all a decent the decent I know the classic, yes. John um, Anderson. Jonathan Bruford, Wakeman, Howe. Well, well, that so it depends on, it what depends on which, what's, what so like era. Bill, Bill Bruford was yeah. the first drummer in Yes, and he was the drummer for the first five albums of Yes. Yes, Time yes. of the Word, the Yes album, Fragile John, Close to the Edge. He left. Yeah. Alan White then came in. Yes. For Tales, Tales Relayer, Relayer, Going for the yep. One, Tomato, Drama, and, and was the drummer up until his... And those are some of my favorite Yes albums. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, most people will say that the classic is John Anderson, Chris Squire, Steve Howe. Squire for sure. Of course, Chris Squire was the, was him. He founded the band with John Anderson. Yeah. I mean, the band was Chris Squire's band. It was actually before. Yes, it was called Mabel Greer's Toy Shop. Wow. And so, kind of yeah. in this in the sixties, you had these bands, especially post Summer of Love sixty seven. Yeah. It became very in vogue to have these really long, weird. Long names. dragged Sergeant yeah. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band, yep. like that was where you know Professor Long John Hair and the this that and the other thing. Mabel Greer's Toy Shop. So that's kind of how it kind of came out of that psychedelic post sixty seven sixty eight move. Yep, and that's where that yes started. It was Chris's band, which then John jo you know joined. I mean the two the two of them met each other. They they met at a bar, and John at that by that point was um, he was older. He wasn't like twenty one. He was I think he was almost thirty. 28, something like that. So he was there a while and then, you know, had kind of some solo success, nothing big. Yeah. They hadn't really made it big at all. And then those two, you know, got together. Uh, they brought Peter Banks in. Peter Banks, actually, believe it or not, was the first guitarist in Yes before oh. Steve Howe. I didn't even know that. Wow. And he's the one who came up with the band name, Yes. Oh. He came up with the band name, Yes, Peter Banks. So Peter Banks was the, was the guitarist in the first two Yes albums. Yes, right here. Yep. This is the American copy. And uh, there's John, Tony K, Bill... Chris and Peter in the back. Yep. And this is the American one. So it's rarely a, seen. <laughs> yeah. Like well, you can't see that on Spotify. You can't. No, you don't. You don't see that on no. Spotify because on Spotify you see the proper cover. Yeah. Which is the which is the UK, which I think is actually the superior cover. Yeah. Um, this one, which you see, yeah. See now because this is, I guess, again, this is the '60s. Covers were changing, yep. but based style on style. And it happened to the Beatles. It happened yep. to all these other bands. So this here is an original pressing of the first album oh, wow. from the UK. Wow. Um, that, yeah, I guess, which again, hard to come by here in America. Yeah. But you, all, Spotify, Apple Music, all you see is this yeah. because this was the true cover. Um, they actually do a cover of a Beatles song on their first album. Really? Which I think we'd like to play at some point today. We could, yeah. Um, Every Little Thing. True. So we could, we could start off with that track. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Let's play it. On the first album. See, it always ties back to the Beatles, folks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Every Little so Thing. So here's Every Little Thing by Yes.
Yeah, every little yeah. thing, only in the uh, the way that Yes could do it. <laughs> Change it up. Did you hear, if you notice that, folks, you hear a little bit of a riff of Day Tripper before yeah. the song starts. You hear Peter Banks, the guitarist. You hear a little bit, it. yeah. You hear that little riff of Day Tripper go, going into it. So their first two albums are really, um, the Yes sound had not really been developed by that point. They were working on it. You can yeah. hear elements of what became classic Yes in these first two albums. Um enjoyable we were just talking uh, yeah. about you know it's survival it's a great album it's it's it didn't light the world on fire though you no, see it, it didn't quite capture like it didn't it was good but it wasn't quite to the point where it was going to draw a whole bunch of people you gotta remember like same time you've got led zeppelin dropping yeah. led zeppelin one which is two a, around this time so classic of an album absolutely yep. one of the one of the albums i consider close to if not a perfect album uh the led zeppelin that whole all four of them oh the first one, four one through four Near right. perfect. So you've got people like, coming out with debuts like that. And don't forget, they were both on the same label, Atlantic. Yeah. They're both on Atlantic Records. And when Atlantic's so, probably going to want to push Led Zeppelin more at that point. Right. So artists had a lot more um, chances back in the day. Yeah. I mean, now you get one you get one shot at a single, and yeah. you're, you're done. Yes got you know a three-album deal. Yeah. And their second album, which we'll talk about next, which was uh, called Time and a Word. Yep. This is the U.S. cover here. Um, Peter, same lineup. Yep. But... 
diff- now Peter Banks, the guitarist, is not on the cover. No, of Steve Howe is. So it's kind of crappy <laughs> on their, on his on the record company's yeah. part. To, 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 so this is the U- the UK one. Again, withdrawn here because we're Americans and we just, you know, <laughs> we can't see anything offensive on our no. covers. This is the UK one. So it's yep. got, a, got a little bit of a provocative artwork there with the lady with her legs and stuff. But yep. of course, it wouldn't, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't have, play that in the couldn't, US. Couldn't have that in America <laughs> yep, nope. in 1970. So again, this was a little bit of a different approach. Yeah. Second album, fully also recorded with an orchestra. Yeah. So starting to get into more multi tracking at this, at this stage. Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit different and yeah, different obvious, sound. Different sound, same lineup, and again, didn't really set the world on fire. No. Um, and you you wonder like you know if they had not made it with the next one, what would have happened? Yeah. But that again, some really good songs on time and a word. Yeah. There's some really real classics. Um, I mean, overall, is it as like, I, I guess number of hits on the album is probably lower than some of the other early albums by right. us um yeah a lot of stuff she had a lot of material in this early era that did not end up on albums yeah b-sides like dear father they also do a ridiculous version i listened to it on the way in it's actually on that the deluxe edition of the first one of leonard bernstein something coming from from west side story yeah like a seven minute version of something's coming oh, wow. which is from west side story yeah. but they do it in a yes version it's ridiculous <laughs> listen to it after listen to it later yeah so things like that they're all for kind of, kind of from this era still um time and a word title track I played this for you last year. Yeah. Do you remember the part where I told you where you where you can hear the splice? Yes, yes. You can hear the splice between the, the two different takes. Right. Yeah. And you didn't hear that at first. No, like, and then you pointed it out. Now that's all I hear when I hear the song. <laughs> when you, so when you hear it, yeah. you can hear it, and you're like, boom, there it is. Yeah. That's uh, like, what, second, like this, like halfway through the song, roughly? Yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll play it. But on uh, No Opportunity Necessary, which was a Richie Haven song, then yep. Every Day's Sweet Dreams, which is one of my favorites on this album. Uh, the Prophet, I think, actually is. Song. I think The Prophet is probably my favorite song on this whole record. Uh, yeah, other than it's, the, it's a good, it's a good track. Other than the, um, a lot of the lyrics in that are pretty, are pretty uh, prophetic, which I like. Yeah. Clear days. I saw them do Astral Traveler in two thousand and eight. Actually, oh, wow. it, was, it was the first tour without John Anderson. Yeah, I have to tell you too. By the way, I've seen Yes probably thirty five <laughs> times. Yeah, more than the average person. <laughs> my first Yes concert was in nineteen ninety eight, and I, I, I have not seen them. I think the last time I saw them was in 2019 yeah. with this kind of lineup they have now. Yeah. Um, but between, yes, the band, Anderson Solo, Wakeman Solo, a couple of other, other incarnations of the band, yeah. that uh, a- ARW, Anderson, Rabin, and Wakeman, I saw that version of Yes three times. Yeah, yeah I, we're, I think we're at like 35 <laughs> shows. A good number of shows. From, from, from 1998. <laughs> yeah, um, a good few. And I think, but the big number is between 98 and 2004, I think I clicked off 20 shows. <laughs> In that six-year period, that's a lot of lot of yes. So uh, it's not that much in the last twenty years. No, no. only fifteen. Yeah. But from the time I was seventeen till I was about twenty-three, yeah, they were just on fire touring, touring, yes, yeah. so with you, the classic lineup too. So it's worth it to go see a bunch of times. It was Anderson, Wakeman, Squire, Howe, yeah. and White, yeah, from all from that just about that whole time. So I'm like, if they're in the area, I'm Why going. Not? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> Like, um, I'm going to see Wakeman in a couple weeks. Uh, his solo tour, his last his one, his last one. Um, Were well, you going to go to the Wellmont show? Yeah, the Wellmont show. Yeah, yeah I've got, I got some good tickets for that. Yeah, I've seen him do that show a bunch of times. Yeah, I'm excited to see the Yes Sonata thing that he's hyping up. Yeah, yeah he's That's got a new release. Yeah, he's got a new release now, and his his solo shows are great. But it's, oh yeah, it's, it's different. Him. It's him. Well, it's just well because Rick Wakeman, if you don't know, is also a pretty big celebrity in the UK. He yeah. he has he does TV yep. he does he does you know comedians I've seen know. the clips and stuff so yeah. he's got a whole other kind of persona yeah in the UK and I think I'd love to see him with a band here in America yeah because if you've ever seen his concerts he has a full band I've seen some clips on YouTube it's insane right he, he does he, he I mean here's a guy who was just a keyboardist and yes yeah. but has his own solo career mm-hmm. with kind of uh, experimental albums and uh, albums yeah. with themes and stuff like Journey to the Center of the Earth and Six Wives of Henry the Eighth yep. That's a good one. That's a great one, but I don't think I think I don't think it's lucrative enough for him to bring a band over to America, which not, is why I don't. I, yeah, I, it's he, not big enough. He's never. I don't think he's he could do a big enough draw yeah. to pay for a full band. Yeah. Here in, in America. America, but yeah. uh, but um, I wish he was. I've seen his show here. I mean, I've met Rick Wakeman in two thousand and three <laughs> at one of these shows. I did. Yeah. Uh, out at the Westbury Music Fair, and I brought my copy of nineteen eighty four, which is one of my favorite albums of his, and he signed yeah. it. I didn't ever get the photo, but he was even surprised I had it. He goes, <laughs> he goes, you've got this. This is one. This is crap. 
So it's just funny when you meet people like that. But yeah. it's he, he is retiring. So yeah. and you've never seen him. So I think I've never seen him, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. As a keyboard player myself, you, I'm really looking forward Rick to it. Rick Wakeman is is just a, he is the yeah. He, I mean, he's classically trained. Yeah. You can definitely tell that. In he's, cla- he's classically some of those trained. Yeah. Um, he actually has to wear like special gloves now. Oh wow! When he plays, and Keith Emerson had to do this too before the end of his life. Who was also? I, I guess it's all of those intricate runs. I, must I be think like, it, it just your hand just must give out after a while. Yeah. It's complex pieces of music. Very complex. I mean, you see like what six or seven different synthesizers around him at all times on those tours. Oh, yeah, man. and you, you as a synth, you know, you got you, you so much. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you know, did you ever finish building your synth? Uh, it, no, it, no, I didn't because I, I shocker they. Half the parts are on back order constantly. Please. It's not my fault. I swear. Um, These grand plans. Oh, Nicholas, I'm going to make the synthesizer. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, all no. the plans are done. That's all I'm saying. It's up <laughs> on GitHub. You can, you can check. It's up on GitHub. <laughs> um, it's open source. It um, is. Yeah. Um, let's play Let's play a track from Time and the Word. Let's, all right. Let's play, um, let's play the title track. All right. Yeah. That sounds like a good one. And let's listen for that. Here's b- Time and a Word. Where it sticks out like a sore yeah. thumb. And it just does. It does. Yeah, I, I knew once I told you that, you'd never hear that the same way. <laughs> In the morning when you rise, do you open up your eyes, see what I see? Do you see the same things every day? Of a way to start the day, getting things in proportion, spread the news and help the world go around. Have you heard of a time that will help us get it together again? Have you heard of the word that will stop us going?
Sorry about that. Um, I was going to say, I don't think that was... I was going to say, we had I, a I don't think that software was, glitch over that, here. That um, wasn't time in a word. That was not time in a word. At the end of it. Um, hold on, let me switch back to the camera. Um, it, appear, right. it appears as though we had a software glitch on our side. Sorry about that. No problem. You guys stopped Alien? Yeah, I stopped it and it came back on. Oh. Yeah. Well, we have, uh, just to explain to you, uh, we have a custom piece of broadcast software that automatically plays uh, our playlists oh. for the different hour blocks. And it appears as though uh, the software, it's called Alien, uh, accidentally restarted itself, which is not good. And it went from time in the word to straight out of Mumbai, <laughs> whatever the hell that is. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, it was fading out anyway, which is... It was. So that was the, you heard the orchestra bit. Yeah, yeah, with the time end. and a word. Yeah. Heavy at a time. And yes, didn't actually revisit that until 31 years later when they did their album Magnification. Yeah. Which they also did with an orchestra as well. Yep. And coincidentally, was John Anderson's last um, appearance yes, on the Yes album. album. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they've done about five or six since then. Um, I listened to the most recent one. I listened to that well, again. Well, we talked about what? Mirror, we, Mirror to the Sky? Yeah. Because I listened to it when it came out. Yeah. And I listened to it again recently, like about a, cu like a couple weeks ago. I, I was like getting through the end of my Spotify, uh, my, like my streaming playlist on my phone, and it just started playing it, and I was like, it's not terrible. It's not yes, but it's not bad. No, um, I think... It just doesn't feel the same. No, I think it's out of, from what, the one or two times I listened to it, whatever there, it's the best of what this version of yes is producing yeah, these days. It, it's not, it, it, it has a hint of that early yes progginess it in does. some tracks. But it just doesn't quite feel right. No, it doesn't. But it, it's it's still there's still I give, some good I tracks give, on. I give I give a lot of respect to Steve for and Billy Sherwood for keeping yeah. the uh, the flag flying. Yeah, it's what Chris wanted. Yep. It does it pisses me off to no end that John Anderson is still alive and he can't sing with them. Yeah. Um, because of just politics and you know that's the thing about yes, oh peace and love, it's so spiritual yeah, and positive. And then there's all this BS politics oh my gosh, within it. Who's yeah. right and who's wrong? And, and who 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 owns yes and who is yes it's it's a nightmare i mean the politics of the band i mean theirs are legendary their issues yeah who won't again the logo the logo the which, name you know which and we're getting up to the third album now which is uh just called the, the yes, yes album, album which most people in america think is this is they think this is the, the first, first yes album. yep and i did for a while as well see a lot of people do now as we said this was their third one and this yeah. was kind of like you got it the you, first big one you're either gonna make it or Make yeah. it or break it, fellas. And that's when they made it. They made it, and it came out in 19... It was recorded in 1970. came yep. out in 71. Um, this is the last out. This is the first album with Steve Howe. Yeah. On it, joining the band. And, I mean, Yours is No Disgrace, Clap, Starship Trooper, I've Seen All Good People. Classic. Adventure and Perpetual Change. Yeah. Um, Tracks that even non-Yes heads would know. Yeah. Especially, you know, I mean, what's your favorite on the Yes album, Dylan? <sighs> it's got to be Starship Trooper. If, right. or before I listened to Yes a lot, it would have been I've seen all good people, because that's what just a song that I knew. Right, somewhat, somewhat on a pl popular yeah, playlist. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a popular Staple, song. It's been yeah. a lot of movies and stuff, yeah. and commercials. But yeah. I gotta say, Starship Trooper is just huh. the, the intro is just so iconic. It the, is. Uh, it is. Na, 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 na. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's so good. It, it's a staple. Um, nine minutes. I mean, again, these 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 are not. <laughs> Simple, they're not, short they're not two and a half minute long songs. No, they're not. Um, but yeah, this album uh, still and Rick Wakeman is not in the band yet, so no. the uh, the the keys are still played by Tony uh, Tony K. Yep, Hammond. He was a Hammond uh, B three player. Hammond's Hammond B three is an, a sound that's still used today. He loved it, and yeah, and, and, and for for good reason. And yes, wanted to go into a little more, more of a different direction, which yeah. is where the synths come in, and Rick. Rick could play, you know, he had all those synth you know, synthesizers yeah. that he had. He was he was great at creating recognizable synth sounds and creating beautiful you know, runs. Which like, which we'll hear when we play a track from Fragile, which yeah. is going to an album after this. So even though even though he's not on this and this is still one of the best jazz albums ever even though it doesn't have Rick Wakeman on it. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean the music is just phenomenal. Steve yeah. Howe, the writing this is where the musicality is just This is where the bond of Anderson, Squire and Howe Really, really form, really form. Yeah. and Steve Howe will tell you that his favorite his favorite run of albums are the Yes album, Fragile, and Close to the Edge. It's those perfect. three are yeah. like, and I mean that I mean, and yeah, it's, it 
Does he have a lot to do with that? Sure he does because yeah. he's a fantastic guitar player, but also the maturity of Anderson as a lyric writer and Chris Squire as a lyric writer. Yeah. You know, those th- those three coming together was like a perfect storm. And then yeah. Bill Bruford, you know, obviously is a jazzier type drummer. His feel oh, yeah. is much more jazzier. Swing. And Alan comes in and he's more of a rocker. Yeah. You know, what, and we, if we have time, we'll play a track that Alan drums on maybe if we get to a, if not Tails, maybe something from, Rel- from Relayer. Yeah. Totally different style. Yeah, 100%. Heavier, rockier, Bill's fills are just more jazzier, yeah. and that was what... You hear it in the cymbal playing, you hear it in the snare sounds. Like They also pick different drum sounds. Like Their drum kits sound different from right. each other, from their roots. And that's why so many fans were shocked when yeah. he left after Close to the Edge, because that was the biggest album, yes, it had. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm out of here, see you later. I'm going to go do something a little bit more darker with King Crimson. <laughs> yeah. Which I wanted and to do. And then he had a successful run over there for a while. He did, and he and and he ended up joining multiple bands. He yep. came back to Yes a couple of times to you know to reunite. He did Anderson Bruford Wakeman and yep. how. Um, but you gotta give him the guy respect. He wanted to follow his uh, values and yeah. he left after close to the edge, but we're not there yet. No. Let's listen to on vinyl, let's listen to Starship Trooper from the Yes album from nineteen seventy one. Cure up there, Mr. Franz. Track three, side one. Hold on. <laughs> uh. Rookies. I have to turn it off. Rookies. There you go. Find it. <laughs> Track three. I have to play the Spotify version. Play the Spotify version All of right. Starship. You've got nine minutes and 26 <laughs> seconds to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Go.
Now, there's one that uh, Studio Cut, but li- yeah. if you've heard that live, it has it goes into a whole different kind of section, yeah. especially the ending. That last bit, which is basically mostly all instrumental, is basically, um, uh, it's called Verm, it's, but it's spelled W-U-R-M. Yeah. And that was like basically a Chris Squire showcase. Yeah, and they just solo over it for he, yeah, he would just dominate the stage during that with his bass during yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. Um, it really became a big tour de force in a, in a live concert, Starship Trooper. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the lyrics, obviously, it's, uh, believe it or not, they actually, they broke this up to be a single. <laughs> the first bit, which okay. is known as Life Seeker. Yeah, yeah. So there's Life Seeker, there's Disillusion, and Verm. Verm. They took Life Seeker and put it on a 45. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, which Squeezing is. Squeezing it on there. Yeah, no, they did. So that's all, uh, listen, you can't go wrong with Starship yeah. Trooper. At, uh, I mean, the studio cuts nine minutes, but live, I think it's. 15. 12, 13 <laughs> minutes. L- listen to the live version on Keys to Ascension. God, yeah, yeah. That I've one heard is that, that so one is, is that's where you get the keyboard flourishes yep. coming back and forth and the back and forth with, gu- with the guitars. Keys is just so great. Uh, Keys to Ascension is my favorite live yeah. album. It's and I'm I know you found a copy last yep. year, or year before. You were like, look, found this. <laughs> found a co- found a CD of it. Yeah, and that was that was really my entry point to to yes yeah. uh, in ninety five well, six was when the album came out. I was just getting into them. Yeah, and then the talk era had ended and i remember reading on these aol message boards back in the day classic yes is going to get back together again and i'm I just finding out about the band and i'm like they're doing this thing called keys to ascension yeah and rick wakeman's coming back and they're going to do something from tales and i'm like and it's coming out as a live album and i'm like oh my god this is great yeah it's like the perfect time to get into yes. it was a one it was a fantastic yeah. time to just jump into them and uh they ended up like coming over and doing some promotional stuff and uh yeah but that was, and they actually did a version of Paul Simon's America, too. Yeah, that's a great, I love that cover. That, that yeah. cover is phenomenal. That's, a, you know, that's, again, yeah. not up, not on any album. No. They just did, it ended up being on a compilation album, but uh, yeah. later on. So next, okay, as we talk about Fragile, 1972, Rick Wakeman yep. enters the fold here, as we talked about. This is the album that really broke, yes, in America. The Yes album did very well in England. It got them some tours here in the United States. They toured with Jethro Tull and yep. Iron, and Iron, Bo- Iron Butterfly. But this is the album that broke, yes, in America with the, the big hit, Roundabout. Yeah. I mean, that was the the hit for And yes. that's what got a lot of people at my age to know what yes is. Because it, it, it was in an anime. It was, I and, was going to say, uh, that's how, how do people know this? Because it was yeah. in an anime, right? Yeah, it was used as an, in an anime as like the closing music, I think. I, right. I've never, I haven't watched it. I know a lot of my friends have, but I haven't. Um, but I think it was used as a either like theme music or closing music for a season of it and it became like a meme almost on the internet to use it <laughs> to use it everybody yeah. knew that they opened those the opening song. chords yeah boom, boom. yeah everybody yeah, everyone knows the opener everybody knows it because yeah. it was it was a, a meme from some anime show yeah shocker <laughs> <laughs> i know that's not your thing it's, it's not really my thing either no it's not but um, hey, but, if, hey. If, if it brought attention to yes to a younger audience that's always a good thing then, then more power to them yeah um but yeah, this one th- only like four big tracks on this: Roundabout, South Side of the Sky, yeah. um, Long Distance Runaround. That's another great one. Short track, and then yeah. Heart of the Sunrise, which yeah. closes the album. And great album closing. This is where you hear the difference in the class, the, the, the classical influence in with with the arrival of Rick. Yeah. W- with this album, it's all over. The it. keys parts are just all over the yeah. All over and Heart of the Sunrise again, which is ten minutes and. You know, thanks to you, you know those of you who are listening. If you like it, great. If you don't, tune out. Yeah, you, you, have, to, you have ten minutes to go do something before we, you can come back. <laughs> yeah, because the songs don't get any shorter now. No, folks. they don't. Um, they, they don't get, get longer. We, have, we haven't even gotten close to the edge yet. No, or tails or nope. relayer. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this obviously was what broke. Yes, in America, made them famous. Yeah. Headliners, top of the bill was was fragile, and then they, of course they just followed it up with close to the edge. Yeah. Um, Let's have a listen to Heart of the Sunrise on yeah. vinyl. Let's, let's listen to it. Now that we have the correct cable to do it. <laughs> listen for the pops, people. Oh, why is it spinning like that? I mean, it looks warped. No. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Enjoy.
comes to you and you follow Lose one on to the heart of the sunrise Sharp distance How can the wind with its arms all around me Lost on a
<laughs> See, they, they had you yeah. faked out there they for do. a minute. <laughs> they, if they faked you out and you heard the door open, that the feet go out and you heard yep. We Have Heaven, um, bringing uh, the end of the Fragile album with Heart of the Sunrise. Um, again, 10 minutes does not feel like 10 minutes when you listen to some of this music um, all over the place. Uh, it was The record was just not pushed down all the way. That's oh, is that okay? Yeah. I'm like, I, no, this is like in pristine condition. I was like, condition. yeah, these are not be- warped at all. These are in pristine condition. Yeah. They should <laughs> not be like that. Um, just yeah. so it was a little tight on the spindle. So. On the spindle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good turntable. It's a nice turntable. I've got the same, that's the music hall, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the one I have at home. It's a nice one. Um, and that has the ability to plug in, right? For, yeah. Straight in, yeah. Yeah, to, to, which is great if you ever want to just yeah. do, record out of plenty, it. There's plenty of stuff that's never been digitized. Yeah. So it's a good way a to do that, too. A lot of old jazz albums and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. It's perfect for that. Not a, not a, you know, a two thousand dollar turntable. No, but it's not a hundred dollar piece of crap in Target great, either. Though. I think it was like three hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, it is a nice, it's, 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 it's good. It's a medium size. It's perfect. Yeah, for what it is. But um, yeah, I love I love uh, hearing Heart of the Sunrise and yeah, all those bits. It's great there. track. It's it, it just it, it is all about yeah. everything about it. Um, comes back, you know, and I've seen again. I've seen this done live. How many freaking times? <laughs> um, next up, close to the edge. Close to the edge. Quite an album. <laughs> Yeah, three tracks, close three to the tracks, edge. Three tracks, it's a full album. Three tracks, and you and I, and Close to the Edge, and Siberian Katru. We're not going to play Close to the Edge. No. We're going to play so we're, we're gonna play Siberian Katru, yeah. which is the shortest song on the album at eight minutes. Yeah, eight 50, minutes. Eight you know. minutes and 57 not, seconds. Not a, long, not a long song, you know. Not a um, long. <laughs> yeah, this, again, this is when Yes reaches their their, their peak yeah. of creativity, artistic, every, everything about it. Yeah, um, this is like... If there was one yes album, it is this album. It is, and it's a favorite. But I mean, I, I, I it's it's one of the best of all time. But I mean, for me, I going for the one. Going for the one's a good one. You know, it's it, it's the go-to. It's the greatest, yeah. the greatest album of all time. But it, everybody has their individual favorites. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I've often said. It's you know you don't need to go to church if you listen to yes music because <laughs> you feel like you're in church if you listen to certain yes music. Yeah. Especially most are close to the edge. Yeah. Um. The instrument really dominant on this album with Wakeman, I've noticed, was the harpsichord. Yeah, you hear a lot of harpsichord in a lot of this stuff. It's really and it's nice sound too. Yeah, and especially a lot of it in uh, yeah. Siberian Katru, um, which you know was closes the album. Which Definitely. I'll give to you now. All right, and you can play it. So it's the second track on side two. There we go.
fade out of Siberian Katru takes us out of Close to the Edge. It's interesting, some of the fade outs. Like, yeah. You get so used to hearing these songs, especially yeah. that one live, that like, you don't fade out live. Obviously, they, they have a whole other way to end the song. Yeah. So in my head, I'm going, okay, they have to do this other beginning. But it's just to hear, you get used to hearing so many live, so hearing live so many times. Um, a lot going on in that track. Yeah, a lot, a lot going on in that track. But you hear the harpsichord, as I talked about. Yeah, and, uh, and phenomenal drumming. Throughout. And I really think that's my, Bill Bruford's signing yeah. moment. And yes, is for me, is his work on Siberia. Yeah, Control. definitely. Uh, not that the what, not that you know, Alan had, did not play it as well. It was just different. Yeah. Very it became different. a rockier thing. You know, the tempos get a little bit slower. Yeah. I mean, if you've heard other versions, you know, and it's, especially yes, it's especially gotten live, older. Yeah. It's live, and as they've gotten older, the tempos have slowed a little bit. But yeah. You go listen to Yes songs from 1973, triple the, the, live album, double CD. Yeah, oh, the band was cooking. I mean, they they play the they play the songs faster live then than the studio yeah. recordings. Like, I mean, even when we saw, um, actually, especially when we saw um, Anderson with the, um, band the band geeks, they were playing close to the edge faster than the original. Yes. they were playing. Oh, there were some there were some other tracks that they were playing where it was like noticeably faster than the original. Totally, which is. Another level of playing that's just right. And now, you know, Steve with the yes proper version of yes. Yeah, with the they're playing tempos a, a lot slower. slower. Yeah, a little bit slower. Like close to the edge is a lot slower. Yeah, I get it because they're you know, aging and they're aging. What happens? And what happens? But on. to hear a song played that way. Yeah, and those those, those band geek guys are just phenomenal. they're phenomenal. Yeah. I, that was a great concert. I hope so. They will be back. There, there's a gig somewhere in like upstate New York in July. Got it. He's they're sharing the bill with. Um, uh, Justin Hayward, or uh, I think I think with Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues. Got so it. if you want to okay. see the Band Geeks again, yeah, my, um, mm. they are. It's a summer I'm not gig. Working. <laughs> if you're not working, it's a, it's. A, I think it's July 21st. I won't be around. I'll yeah. miss it, but hopefully another proper tour. Yeah, that'd be nice. We Seeing should. them at NJ Pack again. Oh, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. I might mix it for them. Maybe you <laughs> no. will. You might. Keep, who knows? Keep we'll up see. those right right down the street. We, yeah, right, I know. Right? Go right down the street to the place. Yeah. And go mix it. You got an in house engineer. Right, he'll work for free. <laughs> Let me meet the band, uh, right? You would, yeah. you would do that. Oh, I totally would mix it for free. Wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. I don't know how well I'd do it in a house that big, but you know. Uh, uh. So as we wind down, we're going to close with two songs. So we're kind of we're focusing on the early history of Yes here in the seventies. Yeah. The next album after Close to the Edge, of course, was Tales from Topographic Oceans. Yeah, which proudly hangs in my classroom. You know this. I know that. Yeah. Um, Up, right above your desk. It does. It's been there for six years. No, longer than that now. Yeah, a um, long time. We're, we're, you know, due to time constraints, we're not going to play any tracks off that album today. No, they're like twenty minutes each. Otherwise, we'd be here till you know tomorrow night. Yeah, which is okay. But you know, we you know we have yeah. lives to live. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next, so I mean, it's it's and again, that music, you have to be in a different you have to be in a different place to listen to something like Tales. It's not like yeah. listening to Roundabout or going for the one or even Starship Trooper. Like yeah, revealing signs of God, remembering the ancient, the ritual. That's you need to really focus and lock in with the music. Yeah. You definitely. can't just listen to that in the background. No, it's very dense music where every there's so many layers to it where different parts are playing at the same time that you, you may miss certain elements if you're not paying attention. You have to. Yeah. And that's why I, I wouldn't, you know, go listen to it on your own if you if you, if you, if you have an interest in it. Um yeah. I've I've scared people away with some of those some <laughs> of those songs. I've got I've made friends with it. Yeah. Um I love Tales. It's probably Tales I think it's pr- like I said, the, I, I think I come back to it as my favorite album because the themes in that, especially with Revealing. Revealing is a, definitely a top track for me, for the band. Right. Like, it's got a, It's definitely my top five, maybe top three for them. So, a little bit of ego with Anderson with that album because they had done Close to the Edge. Yeah. Kind of religious overtones. and then, Mega hit. And then the press had said, well, the next thing Yes will do, because they're so overblown and bombastic, is they're going to put the Bible to music. And Anderson <laughs> said, right, suckers, I'll show you. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah. And we will. So he loosely did that with Tales. Um, it's based on these kind of Shastric uh, things. You know, it's really deep, deep, deep kind of uh, stuff from like Eastern philosophy and religion. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it comes from um, a book called Autobiography of a Yogi by, uh, I, think, I think it's Siddhartha. I don't know. You read. <laughs> I read that in high school. Read that in high school. I forget. No, it's, I'm sorry. It's not Siddhartha. It's not. That's Siddhartha that, was the name of the book. Yeah. Um, which was written by Herman Hess. No, the other, it was, um, I don't, I can't butcher, I'm not going to try to butcher yeah. the name, but it's one of those Eastern religion type things. And that, the record is full of that. So you just yeah. can't throw it on and listen to Roundabout. 
you know, or long distance run around, which compared to Tails is like Short. bubblegum music. Yeah, it's like it's like pop music. It comparison. really is. So it's deep stuff. So we're gonna skip it, and we're gonna skip um, most of Relayer. Yeah. Because Relayer, okay. So we've talked about the members and how they shift around and changed. That's a Tails is a is an ending point for the classic first classic era. Rick yeah. Wakeman leaves, yes, because he finds the album to be too padded. Yeah. It's too definitely. much going on. He has since. Return to it because he's played most of it a live. A lot of the pieces, yeah. He's played a lot of the pieces live, and I was fortunate to see him play two sides of Tales. Oh, wow. Ritual and, and Revealing, which was awesome because he hated the album so much that he left the band. So to come yeah. back in the year, late 90s and 2000s and play, and play it. it live yeah, that's a was, whole, was pretty yeah, special that, because he was he, he disowned that music for so long. Yeah. To see the, 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 you know, the great keyboardists come back and play it was pretty awesome. Yeah. So he leaves, and then, yes, does an album called Relayer, which was a kind of jazz fusion, dark album. Patrick Moraz comes in, who later went on to join the Moody Blues uh, and be with them for like a couple, of, like a dozen years. But he often says, he goes, I was only in for Yes for three years, but I'm more, I'm more known for being in Yes yeah. than I was the Moody Blues. And I was in the Moody Blues for 15 years. Yeah, Such is the following of Yes and the Moody Blues. I love the Moody Blues, but yeah. Relayer is a, a real dark album. The, 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 the title track, of, I mean, the, you know, the first track on the album is called The Gates of Delirium. Yeah. It's 21 minutes. Phenomenal we're, piece. We're, it's phenomenal. It's, yeah, there's a war going on. It's basically war and peace and fighting and battle. But it ends, the ending of Gates of Delirium is a track called Soon. Yeah. And that's what we're going to play for you today. And it's basically the end of, you know, it's, it's the end of the battle. Yep. The, we, we've won the war and everything is good. It's very and, somber. And, and it's very somber. And this is where... The kind of the positivity and spirituality of yes, John Anderson shines through yeah. on a track like Soon. Here it is, Soon. to shape for all time, arms the right. 
totally, totally faded, totally yeah. edited down, much to the chagrin of Mr. Yeah. Steve Howe. I was just telling Dylan, Steve Howe hates when soon appears on compilations chopped up because it's it's part of one piece of work. Yeah, the Gates of Delirium, and to hear it in its full. I mean, listen, we're that's the greatest hitch package we're looking at. Yeah, designed for the masses. Fine, we're we're not, which is what what we're not. Um, <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. But it's interesting. Yes took that period. Relayer came out in uh, November of 74. Yeah. Rick had left uh, after the Tales tour, which ended sometime in the spring of 74. Yeah. So Rick leaves. They get Patrick in. They do this album. They do it. They tour America at the end of 74. Yeah. And then they tour Relayer for the next three years, pretty much. End of 74, all of 75, and just about all of 76. All on the strength of one album. Yeah, that's a and it's, also, it's a great album. It's not their most popular, but no, it's still a great it's their, album. It is. It's their most darkest one. But they, now th- their set lists are still incorporating parts of Tales too. Yeah. They kept. They had dropped sides one, two, and three, but they had kept side four in. So now yeah. you're playing all the Relayer, a side of Tales. So it, those tours from '74 to '76 are a lot of people saw Yes then. I yeah. mean, in this country. Um, they did a great, they did a historic show in Jersey City, which I have a soundboard recording of, which was actually simulcast by WMMR in oh. Philadelphia and nice. 102.7 uh, WNEW wow. at the same time. That's how big it was, like, yeah. to, to do that, FM radio, to, we're going to, you know, yes, we're huge then. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, they couldn't be touched in 76. But now, the music music scene changes now in 76 yeah. drastically. From- Why? They, Do you know cha- the change? Well, not I don't know the reason why, but I know what it changes into. So Sh- shorter form rock. So you're on yeah. you're on the right you're on the right track. The the emergence and the arrival of punk. Got it. Prog rock by seventy six seventy seven are considered dinosaurs. Yeah. Sex Pistols, the Police, all these bands are, are Roxy Music. They're all coming up and they're like ELP. Yes, Genesis. You know, yeah. King Crimson. You guys are dinosaurs. Yeah. Your format is dead. It sucks. It's terrible. Yeah. They were wrong. They were both could coexist. Yeah. So, seventy-seven. You know, yes, is still relevant. Genesis now. This different time for a different show. Genesis is still, you know, working their way up. They're not. They haven't catapulted yet. But they're. No. You know, yes, they're, they're, they're getting some good albums out. They are. But yes, is still clearly ahead of Genesis yeah. right now in terms of the prog realm world. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think they continue through that the whole time. They do, and then obviously in the eighties they go to the stratosphere with yeah. Phil. Um, and obviously, do and they change the sound? And they, they go change more the pop. and they have. Yeah. But in terms of yes, yes had to survive this changing scene. Yeah. With the Sex Pistols, how do they do that? Okay. So Patrick leaves. Yes. Yep. You know, and now yes is making another album. And, they, and okay, we have to make four, you know, shorter songs, more accessible stuff. Three minute, four minute tracks. How do we become more accessible, yeah. but still remain yes? So they yeah. come out in, in the summer of '77 with a wonderful album called "Going for the One." Rick Wakeman comes back to the fold. Yeah. To be in Yes Again. He's like, okay. Great you're, album. You're writing songs again. I can yeah. I can contribute to this. Going for the one. So going for the one, that's we're going to close with a track from that album today, which, see, gun to my head, I I think that's my favorite album because it's it's Yes at their most optimistic, sunny, yeah. bright, cheery. And you're still getting an epic on there with Awaken. Yeah. Which, for, which John Anderson will, to his dying that's day, will say great, that's, that's his yeah. vision of what Yes is, should always be, and was. So if you listen to Awaken, that piece of music, which, you know, it's... 15 minutes, that is what encompasses the spirit of yes, yeah. through and through. But you had two big hits on Going for the One, with Going for the, the one, one, and the next song we're going to play called Wondrous the Stories, Stories. Yeah. which there was a video for it, and that really kind of, it made yes, uh, they, they were still on top of their game. Yeah, it they, proved, they, it they, proved they, to the world that they could still exist and we're, still We're here, thrive. we're not going away, Now, obviously, yeah. you know, you know, in the 80s, things changed drastically. Yeah. Yes does eventually break up at the end of 79. Yeah. And they released one album called Drama, which is a great one. It's just the logo of this shirt here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then they really call it high, They call it quits until yep. Trevor Rabin joins, gives them a shot in the arm, and mm-hmm. they come up with Owner Will Only Heart at yeah. 90125. And that's massive hit that everyone knows, and it's still played to this day, so, much to my chagrin. You don't like it. No. Now, see, I love all versions of Yes, and... Do I want to hear the '80s stuff all the time? No, but there are some really there are some gems in the '80s. Yes, so okay. yeah, yeah. It continued. It continued after that, thanks to Trevor Rabin. Yeah. But the Yes had to get a little bit more shorter and get into that and the '80s sound and from the '77, '78, '79, '80, and they continued. But I mean, staying relevant in the late '70s with a hit, which was I mean, it wasn't a huge hit. It wasn't no. Roundabout. No, but. But it, it was like, okay, these guys are it still here. They still have the juice to keep going, and and it's a great track, and it's a wonderful way to close it out. Yeah. So before we play it, yes, uh, plug your podcast. 
Yes. So outside of the world of yes, um, <laughs> I do a Paul McCartney show called Two Legs, which I do with my partner, Tom Hunyadi. It's on YouTube. It's on ever, wherever you can find podcasts. We are... They've been around since 2016. I joined in 2019. Crazily enough, I'm entering my fifth year as a co-host on the show. Um, we go to Beetlefest every year yep. in New York and Chicago. Our numbers are doing very well. We're just at about 2,000 subs on, on YouTube and uh, enjoying. And we're just about every week we do a new show. Yep. And it's all, for the most part, all solo Paul. Yeah. Um, because he has such a diverse catalog of outside the Beatles Huge that catalog. most people don't know. 54 yeah. years worth and counting. Yeah. And there's more than enough to talk about. So, <laughs> yeah, um, for thank, sure. Thanks for the plug. Of course. Uh, it's on YouTube. Check it out. Yeah, Two definitely legs, check it out. Two Legs Podcast. Some great stuff Facebook, on there. Facebook, you know, uh, all that. Instagram, yeah. we're out there. And all of our panels that we were a part of are on our channel. Yep. From this past I saw, the, I saw them post. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's some good stuff. And I was, I was actually able to plug into the soundboard and record this year. Oh, nice. That's good. So I patched it right in from the, right into there. It's a little hot. Okay. I, didn't have, I didn't have time to, to check to the levels. It, yeah. So I had to bring it down a little bit. So, But it was better than camera audio. Yeah. <laughs> which is what they used to have been. But uh, thanks for the plug. Of course. Thanks for having me back on today. I lo loved having you on. Hopefully we can do this again sometime soon. We could do a Yes Part 2 and Part yeah. 3 and Maybe whatever. a Genesis or something else. Who knows? Absolutely. We'll so see how things go. Lead us out with wondrous stories, yep. John. Wondrous stories. Wondrous stories.